This December 5th, CNN Student News would like to remind you that Fridays are awesome. I'm Carl Azus in Atlanta, Georgia. Our first story takes you to the Pacific Island nation of Philippines. People there are bracing for Super Typhoon Hagapit. The word means lash in Filipino. Forecasters aren't sure where exactly it'll go. Some think it'll make a right turn and move north along the eastern Philippines. Others think it will hit the city of Tacloban over the weekend. We've mentioned that place before. When Super Typhoon Haiyan hit Tacloban last year, it killed 6,000 people and wiped out entire neighborhoods. Evacuations have started ahead of Hagupit. It has sustained winds of 178 miles per hour. It's the equivalent of a Category 5 hurricane. Unrest in New York. It's in response to events involving 43-year-old Eric Garner. This summer, police say he resisted arrest for illegally selling cigarettes. He'd been arrested for that before. Officer Daniel Pantaleo put Garner in a chokehold as others helped arrest him. Garner repeatedly said he couldn't breathe. He died later on the way to the hospital. Police union officials said Garner's poor health caused his death, but a medical examiner ruled that Officer Pantaleo's chokehold contributed to it. This came down to a grand jury. It had to decide whether the officer knew there was a substantial risk that Garner would die from the chokehold. It decided not to charge Officer Pantaleo, and the protests heated up with demonstrators saying Pantaleo used excessive force. It's a very painful day for so many New Yorkers. Arrests made throughout the night as outrage pulsed throughout the city streets for more than nine hours. Most chanting Garner's last words. Police some in riot gear blocking intersections as protesters began shutting down the city's most iconic landmarks, stopping the flow of traffic into and out of the island of Manhattan for hours. Some lying down right in the middle of the road, the same inside Grand Central Station, I can't breathe. where other protesters staged a massive die-in as evening rush hour hit its peak. Police heavily guarding the Rockefeller tree lighting ceremony. as protesters tried to disrupt the show. The city's public outcry reaching a fever pitch nationwide. Oh, oh, these have got to go. From Los Angeles. I am Eric Garner. I am Eric Garner. To Philadelphia. The demonstrations across the country disruptive but peaceful, fulfilling Garner's family wish. Yeah, we want you to rally, but rally in peace. No violence. That's all I ask. Officer Pantaleo said in a statement, it is never my intention to harm anyone, and I feel very bad about the death of Mr. Garner. Next story today, good news and bad news concerning the flu. The good news, the Centers for Disease Control says flu activity across the U.S. is pretty low. The bad news, this year's vaccine isn't particularly effective. The CDC says it's because the flu has mutated. When the vaccine was made, the strains of flu circulating around the globe were different than they are now. So why not just make a new vaccine? Well, the CDC says it's too late because that takes about four months to do. Officials are still recommending the vaccine, though. They say it can reduce the severity of the virus if you get it. Amsterdam is the largest city in and capital of Netherlands. Its second largest city, Rotterdam. And that's where we found the Rotterdam International Secondary School for today's roll call. In the States, in Indianapolis, in Indiana, the rockets of Broad Ripple Magnet High School are in today's show. And in the Southeast, in Mableton, Georgia, Floyd Middle School is on the roll. We're happy to visit the Panthers today. Opossums, also called possums, are the only marsupials found in the U.S. And though they might hiss or bite if you mess with them, they're usually not aggressive and they're unlikely to carry rabies. Why? Well, even though they're mammals, they have relatively low body temperatures and that might make it hard for the rabies virus to survive in a possum. Now that's random. All right, cars that drive themselves. The technology is nearly here, but the laws aren't. Only four states currently allow them to be tested on roads. Pros, they might be safer. Most accidents are caused by driver error. 
They'd also allow you to get things done while you ride in them. Cons, they're incredibly expensive, their cameras and sensors struggle in rain and snow, and what if they're hacked, or who's responsible in a wreck? One thing experts agree on, they're coming. Let's start here, point A. And over there, we'll call that point B. How we get from here to there has never been more important. There are more people on this planet going more places than ever before. We're going further and we're going faster. It took us fewer than 100 years to go from that first flight at Kitty Hawk to our first supersonic trip across the Atlantic. Locomotives have evolved into high-speed trains floating on magnetic fields. Cars have ditched gas for electricity. But where are we going next? And how will we get there? Will highways really be filled with flying cars? Will virtual tourism mean that you can go everywhere without going anywhere? Getting around is getting cooler every day. Just take a look. For the last 80 years, the Art Center College of Design has trained many of the automotive industry's top designers. Designers who created the style of many of the most memorable cars around. The more choices that we have for travel, uh, the more complex it becomes to figure out how those means of travel all integrate together. If you take this 60,000 foot view, automobiles are really quite stupid. They are extremely uh, wasteful of energy. It's an object that we spend a huge amount of money on and then we only use for two hours out of every 24. To me, it's inevitable that we're going to move towards this automated, truly automobiles. The school has a list of questions about the future of cars. Like, what do you hope to accomplish when you go from A to B? It's not driving, it's life. The journey in an automobile will be more of a service than it is today. The car can come pick you up, it'll be customized to your preferences, and the vehicle is now part of this interconnected ecosystem of digital devices. The dilemma is what morally should we put into cars? Because, um, you know, we're, we're all very aware that we share the roads with people who are not really concentrating on driving them. They're more interested in texting and things. And the faster we get to vehicles that are able to drive themselves, or, or at least do part of the driving themselves, the, then the less of a dilemma it becomes. With its two iconic white knobs, an Etch-a-Sketch is not known for being a precision art instrument, but it is for Jane Labowicz. She started drawing on it when she was four years old, and she got really good at it. 20 years later, she's etched out St. Basil's Cathedral, the Mona Lisa, Van Gogh's Starry Night. She says the toughest part is learning how to use both knobs at once to create curves and diagonals. Of course, she had to draw upon some innate skill. She's got more than a trace of that. And the story deserves more than a cursory mention because there's nothing sketchy about her superior stylus. We hope you'll etch out 10 minutes for us again on Monday. I'm Carl Azus. This is CNN Student News.